Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celeb news. Now today we have the Tim Tree casting a shadow over a doghouse. Pulling up on 42 Doug is not recommended. We got academics calling the cops. Big Worm comes at Cam, but Cam comes back. Ja Rule telling us what not to say. Rick Ross versus 2 Chains. Bobby teaching Michael signature moves. And Lil Baby finally gets to the ranch. Yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source. If this is your first time to the channel, or if you're new to the channel, buckle up so you don't fall out. Be sure to slap that subscribe button so you can be on deck when we drop this insanity. Ring the notification bell for your daily heads up. Smash that thumbs up three times if your day is going good or it went good and hit it one time if your day sucks. Yo, if the ads are driving you crazy, you could always sign up for YouTube Premium. I haven't, but I ain't the one complaining about ads. You're like, yo, easy boy, you stepping on my toes. Well, move that big ass foot of yours. Shout out to Scorpio Official who showed us love in the comment section. Big up and day one, 35 comments like yours mean more than you could imagine. Salute and much love, fam. Now, first on deck is Bow Wow. Yo, I like to call him Moss. Anyway, ba Moss initially has expressed his interest to participate in the versus battle with Fabulous before pulling back and having folks egg him on. But he lost interest. Now, fans even wanted him to go against Soldier Boy. Now, that definitely would have been something interesting to watch. But he responded by saying, quote, not going to happen. I don't want to. Close quote. Well, Timberland responded to the artist by saying, yo, he might not have 20 in the bag. Close quote, trying to egg him on. And we've seen this in class before, right? Well, Bow Wow didn't take too kindly to that comment and stated the following response at the producer saying, quote, at Timberland, yo, you've been drinking too much Ciroc. 20? Timbo, you better stop playing with me. I can give you 10 before I hit my third album. The Bow Wow era was nothing to play with. I'ma let the people tell you about me though. Close quote. Then social media came through like, 42 Doug has asked, I'm sure he has hits. 42 Doug has asked fans not to pull up on him, you know, to take a pick because his security might mistake the fan for an op. 42 Doug stated the following, he said, quote, if you see one of my cars or you think you seen me, I'll appreciate if you don't pull up on the side of me and roll your window down. It's just not safe. You rarely hear rappers talking about safety. He continued on and said, we can't guess that you finna pull a phone out. I'm not on no bougie-ish or it's, it's not like I don't want to be on camera, but I got security with me at all times. And when he see a Ma Effa pull up trying to chase me down, he, he automatically think it's something else. So can y'all please stop that ish, man? Close quote. You heard him, folks. If anything goes sideways, he told you already. And speaking about telling, DJ Academics has stated what he now he part of the culture, man. I got to tell you. All right. Now, DJ Academics has stated that because Meek Mill green lighted him, which either means gave his guys the go ahead or the green light from a weapon. Not sure which one, though. You know, I'm a bit on the senior side. But since Meek green lighted him, he will loudly and proudly go to the fuzz with that. OK, yes, he is telling. All right. Now, that dude was all that dude was always in class, wasn't he? Ready to tell? Well, academics mentioned he was not a big fan of being bullied. Take a listen. Just remember that Meek Mill is nothing but a hypocrite. And again, yo, I don't know if you have issues with 6 9 You clearly do. You don't want to address him. You got issues with Nikki's man. You don't want to address him. You got issues with Nikki. You don't want to address that. Cool. I get it. Ak is supposed to be the dude who like, yo, you could just get everything off on. Cool. I'm just trying to tell you that, bro. Like, I'm just not into being bullied. So if you got like some tough nigga shit that you have to do, um, keep it that way. Just stop snitching on yourself. Stop telling the world you're green lighting people and just do what you have to do. Because right now, like when you say green lighting, I send that to the police. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, yo, are you green lit? Wait, Meek Mill just told me in front of the world I'm green lit. Okay, here's a cop. Hey, Meek Mill, that's his account. That's his people. Do you say I'm green lit? Are you dumb? So the obvious question is, why was that brought up again? Yo, Meek Mill is in the midst of a relationship thing, man. He don't got time for that. Yo, Cameron has found himself in, in the midst of a back and forth with Big Worm himself, Faison Love. But Cam appeared to be merely coming to the defense 
of Jay-Z, who I must respect. That dude is rarely ever in the middle of any nonsense, especially on front page. Except, of course, with Nas, but that was a different thing, right? Now, Faison said the following. He said, quote, I like Jay-Z. I like him as a guy and the whole thing he created about this fake dope dealing. That's when I stopped liking him. This ninja ain't sold no cocaine in his life. I don't think he's ever won a fight, close quote. Now, Ken responded by saying, quote, I know me and Hove haven't had the best relationship publicly, but Faison don't know what the F he's talking about, whether legally or illegally. Nick Ninjas got to it, saying it like they moved bricks together. Well, after that, got back to Faison, he closed 50's book on how to perform the troll move proper, and he released a few memes of himself that would make 50 smile like a proud father. Faison's first meme was a pic of Cam at a gay pride parade. Well, not actually him, but his face on a gay pride party goer's body with the caption, quote, I dream of kissing 50 Cent in public. Man, what if 50 had to do with this? I hope Jim Jones doesn't hear about this. I love you, Hove. P.S. Why do you think I wear pink? Close quote. Now, Cam fired back with a clip of Faison with the following disclaimer. The disclaimer said, this is crazy because it had a disclaimer from Cam of all people. It said, now, before I post this, I have no problem with anybody in the LGBTQIA, all them letters, community. I have people from this community in my family, friends, I work with, and loved ones. I respect all walks of life. Then he pulls up an old audition tape of sorts and continues saying, with that being said, Faison Love posted some means of me being gay, which I'm not. But this isn't a mean fat boy. This is really you. You got some explaining to do. This the roles that you was looking for? I dig it. I ain't judging though. You ain't on trail, so me body get him in Broke Back Mountain too, please. I don't think he fake it. And did someone creep up behind you in this vid? Just asking, close quote. That was the disclaimer, okay? Now, take a listen to the clip that Cam posted of Faison Love. Hi, this is Faison Love. And I'd like to submit my... Um, I don't know what genre this is, but um, Empire slash Broke Back Mountain type movies. <sighs> Listen, if Jeff finds out I've been messing around with Greg. <sighs> Listen, I think we should take a scene. Or rather agreed with Waka Flocka and Nori, one of my favorite humans, that the N-word, which I'll use ninja in its place, should not be said by blacks nor whites, period. But just to throw this out here, how would rappers fare without the N-word? Oh, oh, wait a minute. Eminem has showed us countless times how to pull that one off. And lyrically, he drops atomic bombs consistently. Now, Nori and Walker on Drink Champ stated that the word should be removed from our vocabulary. I'm about to say real nigga, but I think we should stop saying nigga. I think the word nigga should be stopped in our whole vocabulary. Uh, no, I want to stop it. <laughs> After you slayed records using it, gentlemen, come on. Anyway, Ja Rule echoed their sentiment, making the following statement. He said, quote, I agree with my brothers. Abolish the N-word, repost. As black men, we shouldn't want to refer to each other as a word that was meant to demean and oppress our people. Close quote. Now, I feel what Ja Rule is saying right here, right? <laughs> oh, that was one of my favorite words. The word is offensive to some. So one should <laughs> refrain from using a word that's offensive to others because the aim is not to make people uncomfortable for the sake of making them uncomfortable man that ain't no kind of love and you know celeste sauce is about love man come on now folks expressed in the comments that the word was offensive to them 
So we, Celeb Source, took that into consideration, right? I use N-word ninja, stuff like that. Now, this might be a poor analogy, but you know I got poor analogies in spades. Imagine this. Imagine you worked at a hospital and a couple of people didn't like the word scalpel because it reminds them of a time when folks were being scalped. Now, you wouldn't use that word maybe around them because they said it was offensive to them. But imagine if they told you, yo, don't only not use it around us here at the hospital, but don't use it at your house. Don't use it anywhere else, period. Yo, I don't know about that. The next versus battle coming up. <laughs> you can wet your palate with this one, okay? The next versus battle coming up is one between Rick Ross and 2 Chainz. Now this will be a heavyweight bout, much like the Tyson versus Roy Jones fight that's said to come up, I believe, in September. <laughs> I know, you excited. Now, be ready to announce your winners in the comments below. I'm talking about Rick Ross and 2 Chains, not Tyson and Roy Jones. But of course, if you feel so inclined, let me know in the comments who you think is going to win between Tyson and Roy Jones, because both of these guys are savages. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for that one. Now, I know you tune in for hip hop news and generally, right? We aim to give you the news on hip hop with a little sprinkle of commentary. Some of y'all like, yo man, it's more like a glop of commentary, man, whatever. But this piece of information you need, you see? We give you stories so you can have conversation starters and fillers when you're on a date. We're trying to help you start or keep a family, right? So give us the credit. Bobby Brown, the legend. You're like, yo, there's lots of edges. Legends. <laughs> edges. Legends. Bobby Brown, the legend, the iconic Bobby Brown, has stated that he taught, not bought, not caught, not thought, but taught Michael Jackson how to moonwalk. In an interview with Fat Joe, thumbs up if you remember Flo Joe. In an interview with Fat Joe, who more and more I feel like is that Latino uncle who, who gives me sage advice. In an interview with Fat Joe, Bobby Brown stated that in the foyer, he taught Michael Jackson back in 83, in front of New Edition, Ralph Tresvan, Bell Biv DeVoe, he says we're there. Yo, if y'all listening, chime in and let us know if it's true, man, please. I don't even care if you use an alternate name, man. Use, a, use another name starting with, with A or something like that. Just use another name. Let us know if this is true. Bobby Brown said that he taught him back in 83 how to moonwalk. That's what he said. I believe I we Michael. have a Joker moment. Maybe the biggest Joker moment ever. Are you insinuating that you taught Mike Jackson how to moonwalk? I'm not insinuating. I'm letting you know that this is what happened. This is how, this is how the moonwalk was formed. Ah, Michael Jackson. Fuck. Ah, Bobby, you taught Michael how to moonwalk. He perfected it, but I taught him how to do it. <laughs> oh, we can bring, my we can bring, God. we can bring, we can bring Ralph Tresvent, BBD, um. All on because they was all there at the time when I was showing Michael how to do this. They were all there. We were the in in the foyer of his of his house. Unbelievable! So he took the moonwalk and perfected it. He perfected it. He perfected it. I only used it for battle dance battles. I used to dance battle. Come on, I was a break dancer. I would battle any, anybody who stepped who stepped whoever stepped up was getting battled, would battle, I'll battle anybody. Now, I just know you're gonna see us in the comments on that one, and you know I wanna know if y'all believe him. And finally, your wildest dreams are coming true. No, not that one, you filthy McNasty. The track with Lil Baby and Kanye West, man. Your Lil Baby has posted that he has touched down in Cody, Wyoming. And we all know who's in Cody, Wyoming. Okay, if you don't know, cause you ain't been paying attention, it's Kanye West. So hopefully Kim hurries up and, and wraps the situation up and keeps it moving so they could make their track. 
I know that's kind of selfish. Now, build your fam, but then make the track, homie. Now, this may probably explain why Kanye's album is a bit on delay, which is cool with us. Now that we know that Lil Baby is going to be on that album. Yo, let us know what you think. Rick Ross versus 2 Chains. Tyson versus Jones. Who are the victors? What do we do with the N-word? Can your favorite rapper survive and make an album without that word? And did Bobby Brown indeed teach Michael Jackson how to moonwalk? What do you think? Yo, let us know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Yo, matter of fact, if you know TK Kirkland, I'm sure he was there when it happened, if it happened. If TK Kirkland wasn't there, when Bobby Brown was teaching Michael Jackson how to moonwalk, then I struggle with the concept of whether it really happened or not. Only TK Kirkland can confirm it for us. Yo, let us know what you think. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Make sure you tune into the Celeb Source next time. Your source for Celeb News.